and the intimidating desire not to let this go, yet wonder if continuing will be physically possible. It's a mountain and I can't yet see the summit. So how do I let go when I feel so consumed by all of these worries and fears? It's been a really long, long month. I'm tired and I'm exhausted. I'm working towards my dreams and goals with my step fan, my traveler nomadic lifestyle. And this is the hardest part of the hike, that hard slog where your legs hurt and the top of that mountain is the challenge that we're currently facing. But is the view ever not worth it, I ask you? Right, the van is an absolute mess and I am going away for a few days. In fact, I'm going away for a very long time, but my partner's gonna join me for a few days. And my house is in no state to receive guests. I have a lot of cleanup to do. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take the sheets off because they need washing. And I'm in a place now where I can get them washed. So I'm gonna do that so that we have a nice clean bed and clean sheets to sleep on, because that's a really good place to start. Also been doing a battery test and my battery is at 70%, which is brilliant. Not that bad. So I'm gonna plug that in because I'd really like to start our trip from 100% battery. So let's do that. I'm excited. You're not normal. How do you live like that? How do you manage that much change? Don't you want more stability in your life? Don't you think you might be doing a bit too much? And then we put all of this away for winter. I don't think you listen. While usually I'm so sure of myself and so proud and happy of the life I've created intentionally for myself this way, this shape, with this energy, because it fulfills so many deep needs inside of me that my restless heart craves. But maybe you've been questioned before too by folks that conform a little more to the wide road, much more traveled, as you cross paths with them coming out of that little wood lane, that overgrown path, that trail less frequently travelled. Too much came crashing down. Yay! We're going in there. They all have names. Siren. Maybe you've then felt that little knot in your throat, that burning cessation in your chest, that dizziness as your brain scrambles to find the words, the reasoning behind something you know just suits you, but you don't quite know how to articulate its ethereal, and more than just this realm, magic. 
How do you explain this to somebody who's never experienced it? Oh, it's so windy out there, but so beautiful. And it's a real shame that some of the places like this have been kind of ruined. People kind of just moved in here and started camping for weeks and weeks and days and days on end. So now nobody's allowed to park here overnight. And I feel like the person who's wandering around here in a little orange vest is policing vans. Like everybody is allowed here from 5 a.m. to 11 and different rules shouldn't apply to us just because we have different vehicles. If we respect the rules and leave when we're supposed to, now that the enforcement has been made, which is such a shame, then leave us alone. So beautiful. Time to go. We have some rain. That is really lovely. It's really interesting that places like this become places where vans like ours get looked at suspiciously. That kind of sucks. How do you kindly hold what they say? Kindly hold but put aside their advice when well-intentioned but misdirected? I can only share my thoughts and the things that I love to see what might resonate with you and encourage and empower you to draw closer to yourself the things, the ways of life, the places, the experiences that really light you up, that excite the passion and the fire deep within you. I love the diverse experiences that change brings me. Whether it be the change of location, the change of people surrounding me, the change of pace, texture, sights, sounds and smells bring me alive in the wildness of my soul. What can appear on the outside to look like chaos to me feels like fullness of experience, deep connections, and a shifting perspective on life's challenges and what really matters in this world. My life feels stable when I have my home, my little tortoise shell, my van, siren. It's a dusty, dusty road! Wherever I choose to go, my interests and my hobbies are at my fingertips whenever the wisp of creativity whooshes through my body. I'm very lost. This is not where I'm supposed to be quite, but 
I'm getting there. All right, let's go back to my instructions again. Going on a hike through a magical forest. Going on a hike to a magical forest. To a waterfall! <laughs> and on the lookout for bears! I know. I feel like I'm creating a delicate balance between the mundane and the thrilling. Stimulation and responsibility. Community and time for deep introspection. Filling my cup with joy and telling grief, shame, and guilt that they are cared for and held, but do not in any way control my brain or the way I interact and tend others in this world. It's been so nice to come and visit friends and do amazing little hikes like this. Thanks so much for taking me here. I listen differently. I hear the rustle of the trees, the scritch scratch of the mouse, the flutter of a bird's or a bat's wing. The ability to be close to nature, to have the outside in. To be able to touch a tree and hear its slow pulse, its rustle, and the heartbeat of the mycelium that connects everything underground. Now it's not always easy when old patterns resurface and we are pushed, of course. But I always choose to be my own unwavering ally, supporter and cheerleader. That I know despite what challenges I come across, what naysayers try to get in my ear and what upheavals life throws at me. I come out of it smiling closer to my community and to those that love me and real proud of myself for actually doing it. There is a space for all of us, our differences, and you are not alone in the ways you aren't normal. And it's only the flaw of evil comparison when the divide and the misunderstanding appears. 
May you find the resourcing and the support you need to feel loved, to be brave, to speak your own truth, to never betray your own boundaries, to love the parts of yourself that feel shame and guilt and grief into wholeness and tender healing. Just asleep. Oh my gosh, he's got his head underwater. Taking a look at st oh there we go. Hi. That's so funny. You just gonna stay there until you float? I've been thinking about sharing with you where my mind has been at over the last months. With Amanda and Frank visiting, traveling, my van breaking down, the uncertainty of work, unemployment, jobs, and making ends meet looming over my head. What's going on? It's an oyster farm. We're gonna go over and have a take a little look. It's pretty neat. Oh, do you see him poop? Did you see that? Oh, that was a projectile poo. There is enough wind that we're just getting pushed along. I am not paddling at all and yet I'm drifting this way. It's kind of epic. I heard a saying, a quote that deeply resonated with me, but also felt challenging to my deepest core. When you let go and let life unfold for you, so pretty. when you stop resisting and eliminate the things that you don't want in your life, everything becomes fluid and easy. When I'm in a positive, everything's going well space. This is so true. And it feels like all of the stars have aligned. And there's an angel literally lining up the path in front of me. I don't know what it is. I think it's like a flower. But it's like attached. Wow. But to this I ask... How do I let go and stop resisting the intense challenges I am currently faced with? They're finished, yeah. And that's much younger. 
and I see you all in the comments sharing your challenges, the things that have brought tears to your own eyes when you cry alongside me. Desolation sound that way, yeah? I have felt this really huge, challenging life change of beginning work again that has been looming over my head. How will that affect my life, my freedom, my wild roaming and desire and ability to pursue my joy while also staying true to working towards my financial goals? Hi everybody, I've taken a little break for a week or so to take a rest before I officially start my new job. Finally, after six months, I have gotten work again. So it took a little longer than I thought it would, but that's a relief and I am somewhere beautiful. I have taken my van up on the mainland side of the Salish Sea, off of Vancouver Island, um, up to Pearl River. And it is beautiful. Come up to view, visit some friends and this amazing forest. <sighs> and recharge my battery a little bit. And not film very much and just be with nature. So <sighs> it's felt fairly special. Hello. Hello. Oh, your nibbly lips. Hello. Your nibbly lips. Woohoo! Ha ha! Move forward. The dread when seeing one's house jacked up, broken, and disappearing off into the distance on a tow truck. The exhaustion of working all of the jobs, especially video making, which doesn't even yet pay me a minimum wage. And the intimidating Shoot. desire not to let this go, yet wonder if continuing will be physically possible. It's a mountain and I can't yet see the summit. So how do I let go when I feel so consumed by all of these worries and fears? As I think in a moment of clarity, it is this. I cannot let work or fear control me. I am in control of the work and my brain. I am in control of my energy and where I choose to spend it. If I let these fears consume me, then that's been my choice and I don't want that to be my choice. Second, the only option is to stay in the present moment. The present moment. Zoom in, not out. I just got given this leftover foam board. So finally, 
I'll be able to insulate and finish my wetsuit room. I didn't want to buy a whole sheet because the rest of it would have ended up in landfill. And I'm really excited to turn this little closet into something that will dry my wetsuit in winter. So the foam board's gonna go along here and up there in the back. And it's gonna keep it all super insulated so that when I put the hole behind the fireplace, there's going to be a grate in here which will pull hot air behind this through there and then out the vent in the roof. And I'm really excited about making that happen. Yeah. It's early. I'm gonna go catch a ferry. I'm leaving here now. I have to leave behind these postcards, which I think are really cute. The little cutouts, little different animals that I'm sending to my Patreons. And I'm excited. Who knows where to next? Focus on only what is directly in front of me. I feel this lesson every time I look closely at how intricate a flower is or how many bugs make a leaf their home and somehow shrinks everything into a proper perspective. I've got to take it day by day, moment by moment. I can't look at a month from now and worry how I'll make everything happen, but I can look at right now and do something that moves me forward or something really small that makes me smile right now. It's been a really long, long month, a long drawn out spring, a lot of hurry up and wait for me. I'm tired and I'm exhausted. I'm working towards my dreams and goals with my step van, my traveler nomadic lifestyle, my van dwelling, my future goals of a little patch of land somewhere to call home to build a non-traditional life, to create community and connection. And with bucketless dreams, we put such weight and pressure on ourselves and become our own harshest critic. We have just got to come back to the fact we are doing it. We're alive and this is the hardest part of the hike. That hard slog where your legs hurt and the top of that mountain is the challenge that we're currently facing. But is the view ever not worth it, I ask you? When you get there, to the top, to that dream, remember what that feeling will be like. Remember better what it is like. I can't believe I get to share this journey with you all. I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm here in this beautiful van that I created myself. I'm creating an amazing, amazing supportive community with you all. I have days where I just cannot believe this is my life. This journey is very, very hard and it is teaching me so, so many things. But you know, I wouldn't change it for the world. Thanks so much again for watching this video and I wanted to really make a special shout out to my Patreons. Uh, over this last wee while you guys have really been my support. I am so grateful for the community, for the people who have come and visited and helped and the conversations that we have over on the Patreon platform. And I hope that you're enjoying the Patreon only exclusive videos that I make and some of the funny slash 
<sighs> comical updates you get on my whereabouts or what's happening with me or Siren. Um, and occasionally, uh, seasonally depending, the plant profiles that I'm going to be uploading. Um, you all get a sticker, a sticker set when you first join, and I'm working towards building up my confidence to do live streams with you. Um, we're going to get there, we're going to have some chats, um, so that we can connect more on a one-on-one -on -one basis, and I really enjoy getting to know you and your stories. Um, and the similarities and parallels that it has with my own. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching. Your thumbs up means a lot. Even if you aren't a Patreon, it makes a huge difference. Y'all have made such a big difference to my life and I'm so incredibly grateful. Thanks and I'll see you next week. Bye!